My Mac Pro is ancient by tech standards. When I bought this 4,1 workhorse, the iPhone 3GS was the newest iPhone 3G, man. Nonetheless, as much as I enjoy tossing my hard-earned money away at gadgets, even I can't stomach paying at least $6,000 for a new Mac Pro 7,1. So good old 4,1 is going to get an upgrade after 11 years running stock components. Well, to be honest, it's really just been sitting at the office the last few years as an overnight file dump machine. Honestly, it does deserve better because this baby was worth every penny and made us at least five times over what we bought it for in 2009. This 4,1 is what got my career off the ground. So I decided I'm going to stretch its life out a little longer. The first thing I did was push it from a 4,1 to a 5,1 by flashing firmware. It's a simple two-step process, and I'll link an article below that, can, that you can follow to help prep your own Mac Pro for the upgrades with the firmware. Flashing it from a 4,1 to a 5,1 will unlock a whole new set of possibilities to expand the life of the tower. Now, these are the components we're going to be using today. 64 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, yes, DDR3. We're pushing it up to 12 cores with dual 6 core 3.46 gigahertz Intel Xeon processors. This is also a 6 pin, 8 pin PCI cable we'll need later. And of course, here is our Sapphire Radeon 8 gigabyte RX 580 graphics card, which will be a huge improvement over the GT120. All that will be going into this 4,1 flash to 5,1 with all the original parts inside as we are the first and only owner. One thing I love about how Mac Pros work is it's so easy to work on. Flip the latch and off comes the side panel. It's really that easy. We'll be focusing on two sections, the GPU on the top and the CPU and RAM on the bottom. Press on the outer corners of the latch to pop the handle in order to pull the CPU tray out. There's probably dust gathered, so use compressed air. The first step we're gonna do is remove all the RAM right now so we have a clear board to work with. We have six one gigabyte cards in there. Yeah, six one gigabyte cards. And we'll be swapping it out with six 16 gigabyte cards, so that's a huge improvement. Keep in mind that our tray is a 4,1 tray and you must use the tray that comes with your original configuration on your Mac. Even if you flash a 4,1 to 5,1, you should still use a 4,1 tray. That means if you have a single CPU tray and you're buying a dual CPU tray, you need to get the correct one. The CPU kit we purchased comes with everything we need to make this upgrade happen. I'll have a link in the description below once again of what we purchased so you guys can check it out if you're interested in, in purchasing it yourself. The Intel Xeon CPUs we're upgrading to is basically a decade old, but it's still better than that of the 11 year old one in this machine currently right now. To get things started though, we're going to need this three millimeter long hex wrench to loosen the screws from the heatsink. Since this is a four comma one, be careful when lifting as the CPU may actually pop off. Also, keep track of the location of the heatsink pulled off of CPU A and CPU B. They must go back into the same place. They may not look it, but they are different shapes. If the CPU is still attached to the heatsink because of the thermal paste, use a tool to gently pry it off. It doesn't take much force. With the chem pad, wipe off the residue thermal paste from the heatsink. If your thermal strips are worn out, peel it off and slot in the new set. The length of the thermal strips on each dual tray are different lengths, so be sure to put the correct one into place. Inserting the CPU into the correct orientation is also essential. If you place the tray facing opposite of you with the wording upside down, the triangle on the CPU will be hitting the top left corner on CPU B, with CPU A, the triangle will be hitting the bottom right corner. Now we're going to use heat sink washers. Just carefully drop in three washers into each pin and we're good to go on that. Add a dab of thermal paste onto the CPU. Now reinsert the heat sink and firmly press into the center. Use the three millimeter long hex wrench and tighten it. If you're having a hard time screwing it into place, you can actually see the trajectory of the wrench through the vents. 
Now we will place the new RAM into place. Be sure to hear them snap on. If you have four cards, split them two on each side. If you have three, do three, three. Inserting the CPU tray back into the tower could not be easier. Just slide it back on the track and then the lever snap into place, locking the tray together. Moving up to the GPU area, removing the GPU card is also quite simple. Press the button and pull back to unlock the slot. I had to loosen the screws a little bit because they were kind of tight. Once it's loosened, the card will be able to come off easily. Make sure you keep the original GPU as you will need it for potential fixes you may need. Pop that new GPU in a place and make sure it's seated properly before proceeding to tighten it back into place. Now we need to pull out that 6-pin to 8-pin adapter cable. The two 6-pins will go into their normal PCIe Auxiliary A and Auxiliary B slots, while the 8-pin goes into the graphics card. With that set, just pop the cover back on and lock the lever. Once you start your Mac Pro up, you'll no longer be able to see the Apple boot up screen. It's agonizing, but give it a little bit of time and your login screen should populate the monitor. Like I mentioned before, if you do run into any problems, pop that GT120 graphics card back in so that you can see what you're doing for any quick fixes you may need. Since this is a metal GPU card, we can upgrade all the way up to Mojave 10.13.6, which is what I did. The problem though is that our Wi-Fi card for the 4.1 becomes obsolete and no longer recognized by anything higher than Sierra. That means we don't have Wi-Fi and the tower needs to be plugged in through Ethernet to be connected to the internet. To fix that problem, I bought this plug and play Wi-Fi card from Fenvi. Simply plug it in to one of the empty PCI ports above the GPU and lock it into place before adding the antennas. Also, there's this little trick that will save you a huge headache. Well, not really trick, but setting you need to do. The Wi-Fi signal will drop into horribly low speeds when it wakes from sleep. To avoid this, go to your system preferences and go to Energy Saver and uncheck Wait for Network Access. That will solve so many headaches from restarting your computer every time that happens. Once that's done, we're pretty much all set. We can verify that the system does indeed recognize the uh, dual Intel Xeon processors for 12 cores we changed it to, as well as 64 gigabytes of RAM in the RX 580 GPU. We also do have that Wi-Fi running and the last note I do have for you guys is regarding the fans. So since the upgrade, I've had the fans automatically going up to full blast, even with no applications running. The sensors most likely aren't reading the new CPUs correctly and they're just trying to keep, uh, keep the CPUs from blowing up. I tried a SMC and PRAM reset, but I was never able to get back onto a logon screen after attempting it. It would just load up into a black screen with the Mac Pro running forever. So what I had to do was I had to throw the GT120 back in in order to reformat my drives, re-download Mojave, and boot it up all the way back into the login screen. My current solution for managing the fans though is using an app called Max Fan Control. It's a little tedious for now, but if you guys have any solutions for this, I would love to read them in the comments below. If I can pull this upgrade off, anybody can. With my limited knowledge, I'm sure you guys can do it too. So get out there and start bringing your Mac Pros back to life. I'm Alex with Sip Tech. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time. And that's it. Be sure to subscribe here. Hit the bell button so you don't miss any of our videos. And check out our other videos right here. Until next time.